Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back. Uh, so uh, uh, we have arrived at the last technical topic of this course of uh, combustion in air breathing aero engines and this topic is essentially is combustion in scramjets. Now uh, many people consider uh, scramjet engines to be the future of uh, high speed air propulsion and it can be used for various purposes. But uh, apart from that, uh, the scramjet's engine, the scramjet engines, um, there is an inherent uh, uh, beauty in the scramjet engines. It is conceptually very simple, okay. It, uh, there is no rotating machinery inside the scramjet engine as such. Air is compressed uh, just by the design of the engine as such, just by, the, by, by reducing the cross sectional area. So, when, the, when a high speed incoming air passes through a reducing uh, cross section area it automatically gets compressed by and also there are some uh, shock trains being that being for that is formed and then you add heat onto this uh, high pressure high speed air and uh, you can uh, expand that subsequently to generate the thrust okay so there is no compressor in a scramjet engine there is no turbine in a scramjet engine okay so, uh, because there is no turbine, there is no limitation of any like uh, theoretically there is no such uh, limitation on the maximum temperature that you have to uh, on, on the maximum temperature that you have can achieve in the combustion chamber uh, at least from a materials point of view. But despite this, uh, uh, this lack of limitations, lack of theoretical limitations uh, or uh, 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 this conceptual simplicity technological scramjets are very very complex and scientifically very challenging and that is what makes the whole thing uh, the, uh, the design analysis and experiment simulation in scramjet combustors and scramjet engines very very challenging and exciting at the same time okay so uh, your scramjets has been there for quite some time it has been uh, uh, conceptualized more than 50 years ago but still we still we do not have a commercially viable uh, commercially available uh, scramjet engine which can take a, a load from one place to another okay uh, the reason is that the reason is once again that despite this uh, conceptual simplicity scramjet engines pose enormous scientific and technological complexity so here in this uh, lecture on scramjet engines, uh, we will just uh, mainly focus on the combustion part of the scramjet engines. Um, but uh, we will get exposed to some of the complexities because uh, unlike in other engines, uh, in the scramjet engine you cannot really talk about the combustor in isolation from the rest of the engine. So it is the full engine has to be essentially understood and treated as a whole to develop the insights for the processes that happens in a scramjet engine. So this is just a, this this course will be just uh, like give you a very brief description and the important features. So first we will go into the introduction of the scramjets. Why do we need scramjet engines when we have rockets okay. You know we, we have rockets are very very high Mach number and it can go from all the way from the ground on to um, Moon, Mars, uh, Venus, uh, Neptune anywhere uh, across the across the solar system. Whereas the scramjets of course you know that these are air breathing engines and as a result it is uh, its, uh, transportation is restricted within the atmosphere okay. Uh, so why do we despite the complexity and despite the challenges why do people still want to develop scramjets uh, when we have rockets okay. What is the idea? What is the reason? And then we will go into the steady 1D analysis of uh, 1D analysis of the uh, of the engine a little bit. We will go into the essentially this uh, relay flow which is essentially a frictionless flow uh, uh, with a heat addition and we will see what happens when you add uh, a heat onto a high Mach number flow uh, and when the area of the of the flow path does not change okay that, that creates some complexity. Then we will look into mixing of course in scramjets uh, mixing is a very very big problem and then we will look into flame stabilization. 
flame stabilization is also a very big problem. We have uh, looked into flame stabilization uh, for an afterburner and uh, for uh, like uh, flame stabilization in subsonic flows and we have seen the challenges. Uh, basically, we have seen that flame stabilization was inherent, inherently a problem of like uh, you have to ensure that you have sufficient chemical time scales when you for a given flow residence time scale, right. So, the chemical time scales must always be shorter than the flow residence time scales for flame to be stabilized. But as you know, in a scramjet engine, the flow residence time scales are very, very short because the scramjets typically operate at about Mach number like 6, uh, six 7 and higher. Okay, so, the flow residence time is very short. So, you are uh, stabilizing a flame in such a very high speed flow is extremely challenging and this is one of the major challenges in a scramjet engine that how do you ensure that the flame is stabilized um, at uh, different conditions and uh, of high Mach number flow. So, so here uh, before we uh, go into the scramjet engines, um, uh, we need to take a look into uh, something uh, called a propulsion. Uh, 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 a parameter that can quantify propulsion performance and that parameter is was sometimes is called ISP which is called the specific impulse and if it is in units of seconds it is essentially thrust per unit weight flow of propellants. Okay. Now the question is here is that what is a propellant? Now, if you consider a turbo fan or a turbo, a turbo fan engine the propellant is only fuel. Okay. So, it is essentially um, ISP if I write it like this is T divided by m dot uh, 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 mass flow rate of uh, mass flow rate of propellant uh, times g okay uh, so it's that is why it's a it's a weight flow weight flow weight flow of propellants okay uh, if it is uh, so that's the, the that's if isp is in seconds it is essentially thrust per unit weight flow of propellants uh, you can also define it as like a thrust per unit mass flow of propellants, but then the units will change. Okay. So, to make it like weight flow, we have to multiply by this g. Now, uh, so uh, you see uh, here we compare the different ISPs, uh, the ISPs of different air breathing engines with that of a rocket. Okay. Now, all air breathing engines essentially have higher ISP or higher specific impulse than that of a rocket because in a rocket you are essentially carrying both the oxidizer as well as the fuel as the propellant. Okay. Whereas, in this air breathing engines your propellant that you need to carry is only the fuel. Okay. So, immediately that gives rise to much much higher ISPs for the or specific impulse for all these uh, but, uh, air breathing engines and um, with respect to the rocket. And that is why you see at higher Mach number for ramjets and scramjets of our ISPs or specific impulse which is more than 2 times than that of a rocket uh, 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 at, a, at a Mach number from the range of like say uh, 3.5 to 8 uh, where which is typically the regime of high speed propulsion. Okay. So, this is the reason that because in a scramjet engine your you need to carry only the fuel okay whereas the oxidizer is freely available from the air okay the specific impulse of the scramjet engine is higher of the order of about 1000 whereas in a rocket you have to carry both the oxidizer as well as the fuel so for that reason the specific impulse of the rocket is inherently lower than that of any air breathing engine okay but of course, as you see at very high Mach number, this uh, uh, approaches uh, uh, the uh, that of the rocket when you uh, as you go and as you go into like a higher and higher altitudes, you uh, if you have to design a uh, if you have to design an engine which goes into out of the atmosphere, um, then of course, you need to carry the oxidizer. So, then the ISP of the of that kind of a combined cycle scramjet will approach that of the rocket. Okay. So, uh, you see that uh, when you consider the specific impulse the turbo fans are really very very large and then of course, it reduces uh, to, to ramjets and then to scramjets, but still the point is that the specific impulse of a, of a, mm, a ramjet is uh, still more than uh, a factor of 2 higher than that of a rocket. So, you basically with a given mass of fuel that you are carrying. Okay, 
or the given mass flow rate of propellant or the given weight flow rate of propellant you get you generate more thrust in a scramjet than you generate for a rocket. So, economically uh, scramjets uh, at least in, a, in theory uh, scramjets are much more a viable option for cruising uh, for long distance travel uh, or for cruising from one place to another um, as opposed to that of a rocket. Okay. So, uh, here uh, you have uh, uh, you have again the specific impulse, but you see that uh, uh, the specific impulse also depends on the fuel um, because uh, the amount of energy that is available uh, depends on the fuel type. Okay. So, if it is like the hydrogen based fuel you see this X 43A which was the plane which is a scramjet engine test engine developed by NASA that has a higher ISP than compared to X 51 which uh, was based on um, the hydrocarbon fuel and uh, 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 um, which was also tested um, in this decade. Okay. So, uh, the advantage of hydrogen, hydrogen fuel is that it uh, can have a cryogenic storage, it has a larger volume, uh, uh, um, it can is, uh, is it is easy to ignite, hydrogen is very very easy to ignite, it has a huge flammability limit both in the lean side as well as the rich side. Whereas, if you want to use uh, hydrocarbon fuel of course, it is easy to handle and it has um, um, it is uh, uh, for a given um, uh, volume uh, you get much more energy. So, you can have a smaller fuel tank, but of course, it is much harder to ignite and it has other processes like you it has to be um, it ha if you are using liquid fuel directly into the scramjet it has to uh, first uh, the liquid jet has to break up it has to atomize it has the liquid droplets has to evaporate so on and so forth. So, that requires some additional time. But the uh, typically if it is a uh, specific impulse uh, then uh, the, the, the scramjets uh, with hydrogen fuels are better than scramjets for um, with hydrocarbon fuels. But practically uh, because uh, air breathing engines are so popular because of the high energy density of the hydrocarbon fuel okay, and because we have uh, essentially mastered the, uh, the ability to carry um, uh, liquid uh, hydrocarbon fuel. And uh, once uh, all these problems are settled uh, of course, uh, the, the this type of uh, liquid hydrocarbon based uh, uh, based scramjet engines could emerge as the hypersonic uh, engine of choice uh, both for uh, even for commercial uh, aviation in the long term future. Okay. So, that is why it is important to know about uh, scramjet engines and how do they operate. So, uh, uh, here is a is a is a difference between scramjets and ramjet engines. Now, the in principle, they are uh, kind of similar. That is, you compress the air by ramming it into the engine. So, scramjets are nothing but supersonic combustion ramjets. Okay. So, in the ramjet, what happens is that so you have the inlet. Okay, and then you have a so the in the as it passes through the inlet, uh, so the air is essentially slowed down. Is because the inlet air that is that comes into the engine is supersonic. So, with a converging if you design a converging uh, cross section uh, or the converging flow path then the of course, the, the, the uh, air would uh, air would essentially slow down uh, into the um, inside the engine and uh, when the the subsonic and the so we are talking about uh, we in this slide we are comparing between uh, uh, subsonic and supersonic combustion ramjets. Now, scramjets which are essentially the supersonic combustion ramjets and, uh, uh, and normal ramjets uh, they work on the similar principle that is uh, they do not have a compressor or any rotating machinery to compress the air. So, in this case the incoming air is compressed by the ramming action of the air into the engine. And that ramming action is created by designing by by ramming the, the supersonic air into a converging flow path, which is that is how the inlet is designed as you see here. So, the supersonic air comes it passes through an area which is reducing and uh, because the flow is supersonic instead of uh, accelerating it slows down and uh, the pressure increases. Okay. And then of course, you have the diffuser and then you have the burner. So, in the ramjet by the time it enters into the burner uh, okay, the series of shock trains uh, even if there might be a normal shock also have reduced uh, the Mach number to less than 1. Okay. 
So, as you know the uh, downstream of a normal shock the flow is always subsonic. So, if there is a normal shock formed anywhere inside this uh, engine, so the flow downstream of that is invariably subsonic. So, uh, in a ramjet, um, uh, so this is essentially a ramjet in a ramjet this uh, series of shock trains ensure that the that the incoming supersonic air is uh, transformed into subsonic flow uh, by the time it enters into the burner so then in the burner you can have this uh, struts etc and you can have flame stabilization similar to what you have in the afterburner uh, and then you can uh, but still the flow is of course uh, subsonic uh, and then you can expand it through a convergent divergent nozzle to uh, generate a fast uh, exhaust and which can generate large thrust ok. So, this is the ramjet. In comparison in the scramjet which is the supersonic combustion ramjet as the name suggests uh, the combustion happens in supersonic flow ok. So, the uh, it will be apparent why it is so. So, as such this is in here the Mach number of the incoming air is even much greater than 1 ok it is of the order of 6, 7 uh, for, a, uh, for an efficient operation of a scramjet. So, here uh, you design you again it passes through the inlet it is uh, compressed, but it is uh, compressed in a such a manner that there is no normal shock formed anywhere inside the engine ok. So, it is uh, compressed and then it again passes through the diffuser there is a series of oblique shock trains that is being formed of course and, th and the pressure rises uh, through these things mm, uh, through the as, as the flow passes through these uh, shock trains and the passes through this, uh, uh, the, the, this uh, convergent uh, cross section. Uh, by the time it enters into the burner it still remains uh, supersonic because there is no normal shock formed and the scramjet is designed in such a manner that uh, the flow remains supersonic by the time it enters into the combustor. So, here also you can have different modes of flame stabilization and uh, then it passes through the nozzle where the flow is further extend, uh, expanded um, and uh, the flow becomes uh, much uh, Mach number becomes larger and then it uh, can be exhausted uh, to generate the required thrust ok. So, this is the difference between um, a subsonic and supersonic combustion ramjets or difference between ramjets and scramjets that is the flow inside the burner in the ramjet is less than 1 the flow inside the burner in the scramjet is greater than 1. Now, why it is so? Why do we need to have supersonic combustion for high Mach number flights ok. So, as you see here the ramjets are that is for combustion happening in subsonic flows that kind of an engine is only suitable for a limited Mach number of say Mach number from uh, 3 to 6 appro approximately. Whereas, scramjets are suitable for Mach number from about 6 to uh, 14 theoretically at least ok or for hydrocarbon fuels it is from Mach number say 6 to 9 ok. Why it is so? Why cannot we have subsonic combustion for high Mach number flights? By the way, uh, I mean, uh, the, I mean, you can have the reason is that there is nothing that prevents um, uh, uh, having combustion in a ramjet mode that is in a subsonic mode in a Mach 12 flight. But then the point is that what will happen? Okay, the what will happen is compared here. So let's consider a Mach 12 flight. Okay, and your combustion chamber and the entry into the combustion chamber can be either supersonic or subsonic ok. So, here in both the cases so this is essentially a, a scramjet this is essentially a ramjet ok and uh, this is once again this is a scramjet. and this is a ramjet. So, ratio of burner entrance to capture area these are same in both cases ok. Stagnation pressure recovery ok. Stagnation pressure recovery the P t the, the P 0 inside the stagnation chamber uh, inside the stagnation um, uh, uh, this, uh, the P 0 inside the combustion chamber divided by P 0 at the inlet that is can be defined as a stagnation pressure recovery and in a scramjet that is much higher 0.5. Of course, here it is much lower because you have a normal shock formed and there are entropic losses which is much higher in the ramjet and it will be very very small. So, the stagnation pressure recovery would be very small. The pressure 
here is 2.7 here is 75 enormous pressure rise okay so uh, if you are compressing a mark 12 flight a mark 12 air into a subsonic air the pressure rise would be enormous so you have to design it will be very difficult to design a combustor uh, for such a high speed operation which can have 75 atmosphere temperature this is the key you see the combustor entry temperature in a scramjet if you are slowing down a Mach 12 flight, Mach 12 air that is entering into your engine at the inlet into uh, say Mach 2 at the combustor entry or Mach here it is Mach 4.9 at the combustor entry, the temperature would be 1250 Kelvin. Whereas in this case, if you are reducing a Mach 12, if you are decelerating a Mach 12 air to Mach 0.33 air at the entry of the combustion chamber in the ramjet, the temperature, the static temperature at the entry of the combustion chamber would be 4500 Kelvin. Why would you need even combustion? What, how much increase in temperature can we achieve when the incoming air is itself 4500 Kelvin? And the problem is that even if you do combustion in the 4500 Kelvin, the it will be instead of adding heat it will essentially absorb heat because uh, the dissociation reactions would dominate at such very high temperature everything would dissociate air would dissociate also and heat would be absorbed to 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 uh, perform those dissociation reactions so it will be essentially counterproductive to even add heat but of course you cannot have a if without adding heat you cannot complete the circle and you cannot generate thrust so thermodynamics will prevent that uh, your uh, you can generate any thrust from such an engine so it will be like compression uh, you, you will only compress the air from very high Mach number flow to a uh, very high temperature air and then you will release the same without generating any net thrust okay so that will be the effect so uh, you cannot generate thrust uh, if you are essentially uh, working in a ramjet mode for a Mach 12 flight of course Okay, and of course, uh, at a Mark 12 flight, you cannot have any any compressors or a turbine uh, because uh, compressors, as you know, cannot uh, operate uh, at Mark 12 uh, because of the very strong shocks that will form. Okay, uh, so uh, you see, um, this is the reason why ramjets cannot operate. That is combustion cannot uh, and uh, because of the dissociation re reactions essentially and the fact that your added enthalpy even if there is no dissociation reaction that enthalpy that you uh, can add to the flow uh, by combustion is minuscule compared to the enthalpy that is already present in the flow in this uh, uh, flow okay uh, uh, in terms of the uh, at least in terms of the uh, the, uh, the uh, in, at least in terms of the thermal energy so you cannot really add uh, uh, much of uh, thermal energy um, into the uh, into the flow uh, when you are operating a ramjet when you are operating uh, your uh, engine in a ramjet mode for a mark 12 flight okay so, uh, you have to have uh, combustion in supersonic flow uh, uh, if you are operating at a high Mach number limit. Okay. So, this is, uh, but then it poses big challenge that uh, supersonic combustion is not easy to achieve because the fact that if your flow is supersonic uh, at the entry of the combustion chamber uh, Mach 4.9, forget Mach 4.9 even if it is Mach 2 you will find that uh, it has a flow velocity of the order of like about 1 kilometers per second okay to have combustion sustained in such a flow is extremely challenging and uh, we need the best of uh, combustion knowledge and design to ensure that we can have a stabilized flame at this high Mach number so this is the reason that uh, if you are compressing uh, a high Mach number flow to subsonic uh, you are and decelerating the if you are decelerating a high Mach number flow to subsonic uh, flow uh, then the temperature rise would be so enormous 
that uh, the you cannot really add much of thermal energy to into that highly uh, into that high temperature flow and even if you add it will be counterproductive because all the dissociation reactions will dominate and essentially the heat the energy added by combustion will be used up in satisfying those in performing those dissociation reactions so uh, there will be no energy left for essentially expanding the flow so the only option is to if you want to operate uh, a Mach 12 engine is that you have to work in a scramjet mode where um, your um, combustion must happen in supersonic uh, air. Okay. So, this is the scramjet engine as you see uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, the, sh the shock angles will be quite uh, narrow and that calls for this um, uh, this very sharp uh, cone at the inlet. So, this part uh, will be essentially will you will see that the shocks will form like this okay. and uh, this part the will be essentially uh, will also compress uh, the air flow and this will be uh, this this part will be characterized by external compression. So, the air essentially enters into the into becomes an internal flow uh, at this part uh, where it, there will be internal compress compression. So, th and there will be this uh, this uh, shock trains being formed uh, this oblique shock waves being, being formed and then you have a kind of a constant area duct which is called an isolator to contain this pre combustion shock train and then uh, there will be you will add essentially the fuel in this part. Okay, uh, so, you will add fuel into this part and uh, the fuel will burn and uh, you have to ensure that uh, you basically increase the cross sectional area to prevent something called thermal choking and then you uh, increase the cross sectional area slightly and then you expand the flow by, uh, by providing a very large diverging duct uh, to, uh, to essentially accelerate the flow which will generate the required thrust. Okay. So, as you see that what I was saying is that, that this conceptuality is very sim simple right. It is just a variable cross sectional area duct okay. and of course, uh, then there are like different kind of angles, but because uh, you see that uh, because there is no such uh, rotating machinery it is the flow is very hard to control in this kind of thing. So, the design needs to be immaculate to ensure the perfect uh, performance of a scramjet engine. And uh, the other thing is that you see that uh, yes, we call this portion combustor, but the combustor is essentially very intricately related to the inlet to the to the to the, to the this inlet where we have external compression of the compression of the external flow, where you have internal compression and then you have the isolator and then you have the nozzle. So, the whole thing becomes very very coupled and uh, because there is no such uh, controlling machinery rotating machinery which can be controlled at the at the at the um, uh, order of the operator, the combustor also encounters a wide variety of flow and thermodynamic conditions. So, another challenge in the scramjet engine is that that because you cannot really control uh, this the all this 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 flows here uh, through uh, through different kind of machinery, uh, your combustor must be designed in such a manner that it must be able to encounter a wide variety of flow uh, flow parameters and thermodynamic parameters. So, that makes also the scramjet engine design and operation and analysis very very challenging. So, uh, to summarize the scramjet uh, propulsion system is a hypersonic air breathing engine in which heat addition due to combustion of fuel and air occurs in a flow that is supersonic relative to the engine. So, that is the hallmark of a scramjet engine that the flow in this in the combustor is supersonic. Okay. In a ramjet engine the combustion happens in subsonic air. Okay. So, uh, once again uh, I repeat the scramjet engine is characterized by conceptual simplicity, but very high scientific and technological complexity. Okay. So, so what are the processes okay? and what are the what are the typical numbers that one can expect in a scramjet engine. So, uh, before we go into the uh, before we go into the numbers let us describe the process. So, you see that at the at this uh, nose uh, you have this uh, bow shock being formed. A uh, large bow shock, and uh, there can be some non equilibrium effects um, here. And then the flow will essentially will flow from a boundary layer along this engine, and uh, it, when there can be a large boundary layer developing, 
and the boundary layer can transition from laminar to turbulence and uh, then the boundary layer even becomes more thicker. And of course, the larger boundary layer uh, uh, this leads to really increased drag which you do not want. So, there can be necessary it can might be necessary to bleed off the some part of the boundary layer. Okay. And then you again have this different uh, in internal uh, 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 at this uh, you have a uh, different kind of shocks uh, forming, but uh, oblique shocks no normal shock can be formed in the scramjet engine because then the flow will transition to um, subsonic. And then of course, uh, as once again this boundary layer develops you see that you have a shock boundary layer interaction. So, as soon as that happens there is chance for the boundary layer to separate because as you know the pressure increases across a shock. And uh, so, the uh, what happens is that the boundary layer sees and across the shock the boundary layer sees an increased pressure which is essentially an adverse pressure gradient and as you know when there is an adverse pressure gradient the boundary layer separates. Uh, so, there can be copious uh, boundary layer separation also. So, one needs to control that you really, really do not want boundary layer separation. Okay. And then of course, you have this uh, uh, after the external inlet and after the inlet internal inlet you can have a isolator I will come to the isolator and uh, which contains essentially the shock train and uh, then you have uh, this uh, combustor. Uh, the combustor is essentially uh, it comprises of the fuel injection system where you are injecting the fuel and it can have a flame stabilization system. Uh, of course, uh, you have to ensure that before you have the before uh, between the fuel injection system and before you encounter the, the flame stabilization system there has to be uh, intricate fuel layer mixing uh, because only then uh, combustion can happen. So, uh, this uh, this combustor essentially uh, uh, will uh, uh, have to accommodate the, the atomization uh, evaporation uh, uh, if you are using a liquid fuel and then you have to accommodate mixing and then you have ignition combustion all these things. Okay. And then uh, this uh, we have this uh, large uh, expanded uh, nozzle which accelerates the flow further. Now, uh, you have seen that in a gas turbine combustor. Okay. In a gas turbine combustor because the flow into the combustor was subsonic and uh, because um, of course, gas turbine combustors uh, the flows are subsonic and because you are adding heat into that subsonic flow there was a small pressure drop that you have learnt always. But here you are adding heat into a supersonic flow. Okay. So, when you add heat into a supersonic flow and the, if the cross sectional area is constant then you have pressure rise. Okay. Now, when you have pressure rise what happens? Of course, you cannot you the flow does not want to go into a region where the pressure is increasing. Okay. It is the negative pressure gradient that is the force that drives the flow. Okay. But of course, the flow can proceed due to its own inertia, but it does not really want to go. So, what happens is that in this supersonic flow that is reflected in form of a shock waves uh, can be formed and uh, there can lead to a kind of a different kind of oscillations. Okay. So, but you do not want these oscillations uh, this this pressure rise which is the pressure is rising in the combustor. Um, so, if I plot um, if I plot the um, the pressure rise only in this combustor part it will be something like this. Okay. So, you do not want uh, this 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 um, uh, this flow to sense this uh, pressure rise um, uh, uh, despite the fact that it is a, um, a supersonic flow, but if it uh, somehow uh, this this pressure rise uh, reduces the mass flow rate too much then there is a possibility that there can often be a normal shock being formed in this um, inlet and of course, then the whole flow becomes subsonic and your scramjet combustor is lost. Okay. And uh, the whole thing is essentially breaks down then becomes the flow becomes so subsonic the temperature rises. So, you really cannot afford that. Okay. And this before even that normal shock forms there is a lot of uh, things in uh, oscillations can happen which is called essentially on start inside the inlet and the isolator. So, you really do not want that. So, to prevent that what you have is that you de de you design a constant cross section called this isolator the purpose of which is essential to contain the shock train and to essentially shield the inlet. Okay. This isolator uh, essentially this uh, shields the inlet from the adverse effects of 
pressure rise in the combustor okay so this is the, the it's uh, really otherwise it's uh, adds to drag and all these things but this is the thing that it purpose are, uh, serves so all of the parts are very easy to understand the inlet of course is for the ramming action where you are designing this uh, reducing cross section so that your flow essentially the supersonic flow essentially slows down and it, the pressure increases because you to complete the thermodynamic circle and to extract work or to generate thrust you need to add heat only at high pressure so this part causes uh, this part causes the pressure rise okay this part causes the pressure rise this uh, isolated part essentially shields the inlet from the adverse effects of pressure rise in the combustor and then in the combustor you add uh, heat uh, mm, uh, but before that you, you also add fuel and allow the fuel to mix and uh, then the fuel can get uh, burnt and then uh, increase the stagnation enthalpy of the flow and then this uh, very high stagnation enthalpy flow can be essentially uh, accelerated uh, further in this, uh, 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 in this divergent nozzle um, to, uh, to generate uh, large thrust. So, what are the numbers that we are talking about? So, typical uh, uh, scramjet can operate at Mach number 6 and um, if we look into the numbers uh, that uh, we are interested for the typical scramjet operation. Uh, so, it is uh, let us consider this scramjet engine flying at a uh, altitude of 30 kilometer at uh, Mach number 6. Uh, so, the static pressure it can encounter is about 1.2 kilopascal and uh, the static temperature can be about 226 Kelvin of course, it is reduced because of the high uh, altitude okay. and uh, the total temperature the total temperature is essentially T static plus V square by 2 Cp okay. so this total temperature is about uh, 1853 Kelvin now these are approximate numbers uh, which come out from this uh, for a typical for a scramjet engine and uh, of course the total temperature can remain fixed throughout the uh, engine but the total pressure of course uh, 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 should reduce because of uh, entropy uh, rise uh, mm, uh, due to uh, friction etc and shock waves etc so uh, by the time it enters into the isolator so if we can consider even the isolator to be part of the combustor uh, if it is in a ramjet mode then of course the Mach number should be small the Mach number is about 0.3 and the static temperature uh, should rise very much 1700 Kelvin which is you see that enormously large to uh, for adding substantial amount of heat total temperature still remains same okay. So, whereas in the scramjet mode uh, uh, you can uh, have a Mach number of uh, uh, it should be supersonic so the Mach number is 2.2 whereas you see the static temperature is now good it is about 1000 Kelvin whereas the total temperature can be reduced because of the boundary layer bleed etc. Okay. So, but it of course uh, remains very same uh, close to that. Okay. So, uh, now uh, these are the typical numbers so you see that uh, why this scramjet uh, mode of operation is pre uh, preferred because the static temperature that of the flow that enters into the combustor is at much lower temperature and there is room to add heat into the flow okay, without incurring or without inducing strong dissociation reactions. You can add heat into 1000 Kelvin and take it to say 2000, 2200 Kelvin okay, but what will you do at uh, adding heat into this temperature into this flow there is nothing. So, so, this is uh, once again uh, uh, the, the, the typical uh, schematic uh, that we were discussing the so uh, if we uh, and this is also the cycle corresponding to this. So, if this is 0 is the free stream conditions and 1 is the beginning of compression. So, this part is essentially the compression that happens um, uh, 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 external plus internal compression is uh, combined and then at 2.1 it enters into the isolator at 3 it enters into the combustor at 4 it uh, this combustion chamber exit and then it uh, at 10 uh, from there it is essentially the nozzle. So, this is essentially the inlet um, or the intake um, and this is the nozzle and this is your isolator and this part is your combustor. Okay. 
So, uh, in the enthalpy entropy diagram you see that um, of course, uh, this type of uh, compression through shock waves uh, through different kind of oblique shock waves induces uh, entropy uh, rise, uh, entropy is generated. Uh, so, from the ideal cycle it deviates uh, 2.1 and then it goes to 3 and then you see uh, combustion we still consider for the purpose of the cycle um, uh, we can consider at constant pressure. Uh, just like in a in a gas turbine engine we consider that um, uh, pressure is uh, pressure drops slightly, but actually you will see that here the combustion the pressure rises substantially it cannot be really neglected and then it has an uh, expansion process through the nozzle. So, typically if you have uh, uh, if your inlet Mach number is M0 and your uh, and your uh, combustion chamber uh, entrance Mach number is uh, M3 then uh, this relation typically holds and it is essentially we can shown that essentially it is uh, for large Mach number limit for large M0 is essentially T0 by T3 and T0 by T3 is of the order of 10. So, this M3 by M0 um, essentially becomes the square root of um, um, essentially 3.33 uh, 3, uh, something like that. So, you see here um, if uh, this uh, Mach number is um, 6 this becomes a Mach number of 2 or something like that. Okay. So, this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the thing that for a, a vehicle which is uh, flying at a Mach of 6 the combustor entry uh, uh, the combustor entry Mach number of course, reduces, but it is still supersonic. Okay. So, even if the flight Mach number is 6 your uh, Mach number at the combustor entry is 2.2, but the only thing that remains constant is essentially the st total temperature uh, uh, the stagnation temperature, but the static temperature increases uh, uh, because of the compression action and uh, now you have to add uh, you have to consider this uh, combustor. So, this is uh, the scramjet how the combustor is essentially integrated into the, uh, the, the scramjet engine and um, these are the basic operations of the, um, the scramjet engine. So, in the next part we will take up um, um, uh, how um, we can add uh, what happens uh, uh, when we add heat into a supersonic flow and uh, it is a very fundamental thing, uh, but we will still do the analysis because uh, this is a little bit counterintuitive. We are so far in the course we have never discussed what happens to uh, the flow when you add heat into it. So, we will discuss that and we will move forward with the different processes that happens in a scramjet engine. So, thank you.